What's up, guys? It's your boy DJ coming at you. I uh, got the light shining in my eye. With an another update on the Razor Eco Smart. Sup, Scooter? Okay, wham. There it is. The Razor Eco Smart Sup Scooter. Okay, for those those of you that want to know, that want to know, uh, the battery that I'm using in the scooter is right there. Uh oh, I'll turn the light off for a second. Hang on. That is the battery that I'm using in the scooter. C A O M M. Uh, and it says batteries in art. Got it off eBay. They run like 150 bucks, something like that. Yeah. So. That battery is also being tested. Not right now because we're in the colder temperatures. But anyway, back to what I was talking about. Uh, by the way, this is a 48 volt, 20 amp hour battery. And it is a direct fit for the Razor Eco Smart Sub Scooter. That's actually what it's called, guys. I know you get sick of me saying sub, but that's what this scooter is called. If you try to buy it as a Razor Eco Smart, you'll probably get the one with the DC brush motor. But anyway, this is like the third video I've made on this scooter. Um, uh, my project was was a success. I went. I've traveled maybe five, six miles on the scooter so far. Does great off of forty eight volts. Uh, I just have to polish everything off and finalize it. Here's what it looks like inside. Top view. You got your battery. Got your controller. You got your bunch of wires back here. So yeah, um, the our original power switch was right here. Original charger port was right there. So I still have yet to do that. Uh, here's the part of the battery cable right here, my adapter anyway. Let me show you guys if I can get it, the battery charge port. That's the battery cable for the charge port right there, okay? So I'm gonna have to drill a hole right here and this thing has threads on it so I can screw a screw onto it so that it just sticks out right there. But anyway, that will have to be done because right now I don't have an on and off switch. I plug it up and it's ready to go. Um, What can I show you guys uh, or tell you guys? I think this project was is, is turning out to be a big success with the scooter, okay? Uh, because if you buy the scooter start stock, the Razor Equal Smart Sub Scooter stock, uh, it's a 36 volt system and it just has three. And I'll show you guys so you see how bad it is. Three, turn some light on for you. Three lead acid batteries. One, two, and three. There you go. That's the power source for that wonderful scooter over there. And there, it's only a, uh, uh, six amp hours. That's it. Each one, two, three. So, eighteen amp hours of lead acid power, which is nothing. It'll give you a range, maybe, maybe ten miles if you're lucky, and that's if you're super light, <laughs> like hundred and thirty pounds. You might get that far. Um. Oh, okay. What can I say about my project? Okay. Uh. Again, I would t say this to anybody that's interested in this scooter. If you're not going to modify this scooter. And upgrade the power source, put a bigger battery in there, different controller, then I would highly recommend you not to buy this scooter unless you're going to just go four to five miles, maybe six or seven miles around your neighborhood. If that's all you're going to do, it's a great scooter. You know, if you're lightweight, if you weigh 170 on up, I would not buy the scooter. If you weigh 165, I wouldn't buy the scooter if, unless you're going to do the upgrade. Or unless you're going to just ride around the neighborhood, you're happy going, ha happy driving under uh, under 10 miles, then get it. It's great. But if you're like me, I'm a long range person. Um, I'll ride these things 20, 30 miles. One thing twice. I'll ride it to work. I work 15 miles away. I'll probably be riding it to work after I've done some thorough testing. Okay. Uh, my reason, one of my reasons for wanting to ride to work, uh, I'm a motorcycle rider. I've been riding a long time. Since I was a kid, but anyway, I'm getting some hand pain in my hand, uh, which comes from the vibration of the motorcycle. Okay, so that's another reason I'm pressing my e projects more to a actually use it as adequate, not adequate, but uh, as uh, my transportation, as opposed to my my uh, motorcycles because there's no engine vibration, so it doesn't set off my hand. And I get hand pain sometimes when I sleep. So I need to take a break riding motorcycles. So that's one of the things that's push. One of the reasons that's pushing me to get me perfect. Try to perfect me a scooter for travel. What I mean by perfect is something that I can drive 40, 50 miles. You know, and uh, yeah, 40, 50 miles 
on off of a lithium ion battery at 48 volts. Okay, how am I going to get that range? I'll probably probably have to get two of these batteries to make it happen, uh, which means I would probably have another battery and uh, have it on a rack back here somewhere, or maybe even up here. We'll see. We'll see. I haven't figured it out yet. But anyway, uh, yeah, this screw is awesome. Um, I got my parts that I bought to upgrade the screw, excluding the battery. The battery I got off eBay. Find it on eBay. This guy, this company's been making battery, e-bike batter, e batteries for over 10 years. No, I'm sure they're not lithium, uh, they're not Sanyo or Panasonic cells, but I'm going to do a test and we're going to see how well this battery does At uh, on a scooter that's not going to be, you know, I'm not going to be, I'm not going for outbursts of power. I'm just looking for a long range battery because I'm gonna, one thing I'm going to do two different with my project, this scooter project is, I'm keeping it legal, guys. I'm not going to go over 20 miles an hour. I'm not, even though this thing will probably do 25. I got the computer set right now at 15 miles an hour. That's as fast as it'll go. So that'll help me get a longer range. That's my objective is to get, have a long range scooter at speeds up to 15. That's fine for me. But anyway, uh, I'll show you guys again. This right here is called the Cycle Analyst. Got it at Green Technologies. Let me turn that light off for a second. Uh, maybe turn it back on. <laughs> it's called the Cycle Analyst. I got it. Got it at Green Technologies. It's uh pretty neat because uh, when I attached it to this motor, the uh, Razor Eco Smart motor, I got the, the the connections right. It reads my actual speed. It reads also how many miles I'm putting on the motor, which is a wonderful thing. I love that. So that is really awesome to know that. So. I'm going to put this thing to the full test. Not so much now because it's wintertime, but uh, come summertime, I'll put it to the test. Uh, also, this this thing has other important applications that you can use with your direct drive motor, like regenerative, regenerative braking. Uh, I don't have the regenerative brake yet, but I will be ordering one. It's going to go on this side. So, the scooter will have dual brakes. It will have a, a uh, the traditional razor band brake right here, that black thing right there. That's the band brake, which is quite effective. And then on top of that, I will have electronic braking, which will be the regen braking, which is electronic, which will also feed power back into the battery, which is awesome. And I'll be able to see all that on this cycle analyst on the display screen, which is kind of cool. So you guys may be wondering, what kind of controller did I use? Okay, let me take it out. Okay, this controller here is quite awesome from what I've seen so far. It's called the... Uh, there you go. That's it. Hang on. I got some tape on there. <laughs> Hang on, guys. Get this tape off so you guys can get the full look at it. Uh, there you go. That's the controller right there. Let me take the light off. Hang on. All right. There you go. That's the controller. I don't know why it's foggy, but it is. All right. There we go. It's a little better. But it's called the, uh, there you go, EZCT202001 0740 controller. Again, it's called the EZCT202001 0740 controller. Uh, Grin Technologies. Uh, yeah, got a little red light indicator there. Uh, here's my regenerative cable right here for my regenerative brakes. Um, got my cycle analyst plug right there. And what else? Hang on, let me take some of this tape off, guys. Hang on. Bear with me, guys. I'm just, <laughs> as you can tell, I don't try to really polish videos off when I make them. I got too many things to do. I'm not going to waste hours and hours doing videos. Again, I'll uh, just do this for to share information but uh yeah there you go this is the uh the controller that i am using uh can handle up to, I, th I think it handles up to like uh 55 volts or maybe 52 volts something like that but do your research it's on grin technologies uh website grin technologies out of canada so from what i see is a very good controller it's small i was able to fit it in the deck of the razor eco smart sub scooter yes uh Here's your power cord. It comes like that stock with a 
with the, uh, this is not a Dean's, this is called the uh, Anderson connector. Got that. And right here is my throttle cable. Right here will be my electronic brake cable. And right here is my cycle analyst cable. So it's quite simple. Um, and then it has, I accidentally ordered the one with a really long cord. So, uh, uh, yeah, I had kind of wrap it, I had to kind of wrap it around in there. But anyway, let me just show you something that I had to do. Now, it's not pretty, guys. I'm not a professional at soldering. But anyway, uh, let me take this off. Give me just a second, guys. Hang on. I got to unplug this. Hang on. Uh -oh. But anyway, I disconnected the uh, cable. All right, right here. Hang on, guys. Hang on. If you look at this right here, this cable right here is the, uh, oh, dang it. I think it's called the phase wires cables that go to the motor, motor phase wires. I believe, I'm not sure. Sorry, I don't have the terminology down exactly. Uh, I had to actually cut this off of the Razor controller, ladies and gentlemen, and solder these wires together and tape them up with some electrical tape. It's not pretty, but it does work, and it won't be coming undone anytime soon. Uh, Hall effects, I believe, I believe that's what it's called, cable right here. Well, this patches in to the uh, direct drive motor cable right here. See that? Plugs into that. And uh, right here. This plugs directly into that. So so I was able to figure that out because I kind of panicked a little bit when I was working on this project because when this controller came in, I assumed it had, uh, when I looked at the pictures, I thought for sure, and when I talked to the rep, I thought they told me that this connector would work. It had a five pin. It did, but it had a five pin female end on it. I needed the five pin male end. So since my Razor controller, uh, the stock controller had this, five pin uh and it was already you know part of the, the original system i just spliced you know cut the wires off of it off that stock controller and uh i matched the colors up up with the five i matched these five wires here up with the five wires of the controller okay you have to do that and i haven't had a problem it works flawlessly guys i'm very happy that it's working too because uh i was a little bit worried <laughs> okay so if you decide to go this route and do it the way that I did it with this controller, which is from what I see, it seems to be a really nice controller. Uh, that controller, if you choose to go with that controller, you'll have to, uh, this controller, you'll have to uh, cut the the uh, hall sensor wires off the original controller of the Razor and take your time and solder them because the wires are quite tiny on this controller. They're quite tiny. But it does work. Like I said, it works fine. Um, use some electrical tape, solder it well. And I had some other things I had to do. But yeah, I just wanted to show you guys that so you can get the gist of it to show you that it did work. So if you get this controller, don't panic about uh, the five pin female connector. Where is it? I think I've already unplugged it. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, no, here it is right here. Uh, it will need this end of it, though. You'll have to, again, go to your Razor controller and cut the wires and put that in on this controller and it will work fine. Just match your colors up. Okay, uh, what else? Uh, the height of the scooter, the neck, it's nice and tall. I'm telling you, the ride difference is so much better with these big wheels, as I already knew, you know, because that's this is where I started at, was with the big wheels. So, as compared to these little wheel scooters here, okay, as you can see. Many projects, guys. Many projects. Go back and look at some of my videos. You'll see some of these projects. Uh, like right here is my uh, Razor E300. My Code Red Edition. Right there. Oh, yeah. Right here. Awesome scooter. Awesome scooter. Check it out, though, on the bottom of it. No battery. The battery's modular. I just stick the battery in the basket up here or hang it down here in a pouch, you know, or even back here in the luggage, you know. This is an awesome scooter right there. Check the wheels out. Oh, yeah. But anyway, back to the Eagle Smart. So yeah, guys, I shared the what I did as far as uh, my electronics on the Razer Eagle Smart here. Again, Grin Technologies is where I got this controller at. It works great, guys. I haven't had any problems once I got the wires connected. And what I did too, guys, I even wrote down the, the sequence, uh, the motor wires, okay? 
as far as matching them up uh, color for color, like blue to blue, green to green, it didn't work, you know. So what I did was, uh, when I got the combination right, I wrote it down, and that combination is on the three motor wires, one, two, and three, it will be green to blue. Then there will be blue to yellow. Then it will be yellow to green. That combination of wire hookup causes the motor to run forward flawlessly, guys. I haven't had any problems, okay? Again, if you go with this controller, which is, seems to be quite awesome, uh, when you match up the wires, uh, I know it looks kind of ghetto the way I got it rigged up right now, but it works. Um, the combination will be green to blue, blue to yellow, and yellow to green. That combination will cause the wheel to rotate properly in the proper direction. So, okay, I'm not going to make this video too long. It's already, what, 16 minutes? That's too long. All right, guys, I'm going to cut it short. Later.